Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Understanding Unit Rates, Part 1. The title of this may not sound so uh, exciting, but I promise you it's really, really important to understand how to solve problems in math. We're going to conquer what we call a unit rate today. And the good news is that you already know what a unit rate is. In fact, I'm going to list at least five examples right now of unit rates here in the beginning before we actually solve anything, and you already know what they mean. But we have to, of course, extend your knowledge to maybe things that you maybe don't already know, but here we're going to start with what you know. A unit rate is basically what we're going to have when we're trying to figure out how much of something happens per one day, or one second, or one meter, or one kilometer, or something like this. When you're looking at, at miles per hour, for instance, or kilometers per hour, that's a unit rate because it's how many kilometers are you traveling for every one hour. It's called a unit rate because we're trying to see how much is happening per one of, in this case, one hour. So let's just take a couple of quick examples. We just mentioned kilometers per hour. This is how we write units. And we have a unit on the top and a unit on the bottom. And when we have a fraction bar like this, we use the word per. So you read this as kilometers per hour. So for instance, if you had uh, eight kilometers per hour, what are you really saying? It means for every hour that goes by, you go another eight kilometers. Another hour goes by, another eight kilometers. That's what it means. So even though I haven't written it down here, when I write the unit kilometers per hour, what you really are saying is kilometers per one hour, right? And because it's whatever is happening per one of something, we call this a unit rate. Right? When we have unit rate, what it means when we say unit rate, it just means one of something. So when we have miles per second, that's miles per every one second. Uh, you know, we're going to go through many more examples, but the bottom that we have here is always compared to whatever's happening compared to one hour, one second, one minute, one year. It's called a unit rate. And we care about unit rates because it lets us predict the future. If I know that I'm going eight kilometers per every one hour, then I know that if two hours go by, I must double to 16. That's how many kilometers I'm going to go. And if I triple, then I triple the distance. So every hour that goes by, that's what's happening. So let's take a look at a couple of additional examples of this. All right. Uh, here's kilometers per hour. Another unit might be kilometers per second, right? So you read this as kilometers per second. Maybe you have a space probe in outer space and it's going 10 kilometers for every one second. So even though I didn't write the one there, when you just have the unit per second, it means how many kilometers you're going every single second. This is a unit rate because whatever is happening is happening and I'm comparing it to every second. So five seconds in the future, I'm going to have to multiply this by five to see how far I go because after one second, I go 10 kilometers. And after another second, I go another 10 kilometers. After the third second, the fourth second, the fifth second, I go 10 kilometers each time. All right. So we can go and talk about different units here. Instead of velocity like this, these are all velocity, let's talk about something in the grocery store. How about dollars per pound, right? Pound is a unit of weight in the US or the UK system, but it's however many dollars something costs per one pound. So even though we don't write the one there, when you say dollars per pound, it means how many dollars does it cost per pound? So if it were like, you know, $10 per per pound, it would mean $10 for every one pound of beans, or every one pound of rice would cost $10, right? Uh, and of course you could, it doesn't have to be, you know, English units like this, it could be a dollar, so put a little dollar sign, per kilogram. So it could be $3 per kilogram, or, or $6 per kilogram. So every kil kilogram that I measure out, that's how many dollars that it's going to be. Notice there's an invisible one down here. So this is a unit rate. There's an invisible one down here because it's one kilogram. So it's a unit rate. These are all unit rates. Now uh, save the best for last. I'm gonna give you an example from science that you may or may not know, but you certainly will use it in the future. What if I give you a kind of a weird unit? Um, how about this unit? Kilograms. So this is uh, per second. This is time, time. Uh, this is mass and this is weight. But what if I have mass, kilograms, per liter, right? So a kilogram is a unit of mass. That's how kind of like how many atoms and what type of atom you have, how, how, how much of something you have. And liters 
is volume. That's how large the object is. So when you have kilograms per liter, this is a unit rate as well. Let's say we had, a, you know, two kilograms per liter. Now I have an invisible one down there. When we say per liter, it means it's per every one liter. So let's say I had two kilograms per liter. All that means is if I measure one liter of something, then it will have a mass of two kilograms. If I measure another liter of something, it'll have another mass of two kilograms. And this particular thing that we're talking about here, this is called density. So you may have heard of the word density. You may have even heard someone is dense. You're really dense. If you're dense, it means you're kind of, you know, you're, 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 you're it's kind of means you're not, not really that uh, terribly observant or terribly intelligent. Dense means that it's compactified and it's very compressed. That's what dense really means. And because, and the reason it means that is because it's looking at how much mass something is compared to how large it is. So a very high density, a very big density would be lots and lots and lots of mass that would fit into this one liter, maybe a thousand kilograms for every one liter. That would be, you know, something really compressed into that one liter size. So the point of all this is that this is a unit rate because it's kilometers per one hour, kilometers per one second, dollars per one pound, dollars per one kilogram, kilograms per one liter. Every case, the bottom number there is just per one of something. That's why it's called a unit rate. So now let's extend what we have introduced here and solve a couple of fairly simple problems. Let's say Dana can read 20 pages in 10 minutes. How many pages can she read in one minute? So when we say how many pages can she read in one minute, we're asking us or asking ourselves, what is the unit rate? Because all of these examples, per one second, per one kilogram, per one liter, those are all unit rates. Here, we're asking how many pages per minute, per one minute. So it's a unit rate, how many pages per minute. So let's write down what the problem tells us. She can read 20 pages. So we're gonna write the word pages out, right? And notice that these are all kind of divisions. It's something divided by something, something per something, something per something, something per something, something per something. All unit rates will be like that. But in this problem, it tells us that we have 20 pages and we read those 20 pages in 10 minutes. Now, remember back from unit conversions, I taught you in unit conversions to write your unit conversions and arrange them in a way to cancel your units and convert from one unit to another. We learned how to convert, you know, kilometers to millimeters and, you know, kilograms to milligrams. We learn how to do that by arranging the units kind of in a table like this and arranging the units to cancel what we want and then we get out at the end whatever it is we're looking for. We already learned that. So if you haven't learned that or if you don't remember, go back and review those, those lessons. But here, if we write it like this, 20 pages on the top and 10 pages on the bottom, we have pages is the unit up here and minutes down here. None of these units will cancel. So we can't cancel them, but if we actually do this division, then the units will not cancel. What will we get as a unit? Pages per minute. And that's what we're asking. It says how many pages can she read in one minute? So we have to divide the number of pages she actually reads here, 20. We're gonna divide because it's on the bottom here, divided by 10. And what is 20 divided by 10? 20 divided by 10 is two. And so we do the division of the numbers, we get two, but the units, they don't go away, they're, they're still there. So we have to write, write it as pages per minute. They don't cancel, they don't disappear, it's still pages per minute. This is a unit rate. It says how many pages per, per one minute can she read? Two pages per minute means two pages for every one minute just as I was writing the ones down here. But when you say kilometers per hour, it means per one hour. You don't have to write the one there. So we don't need to write the one here, but this is a unit rate. Unit rate is telling us what is happening per every one unit of time or whatever it is. Here, it's per minute. So after the first minute, she reads two pages. After the second reason, a minute, two more pages. After the third minute, two more pages and so on. After five or let's say after 10 minutes, what's gonna happen? Two times 10 is 20. She's gonna read 20 pages in those 10 minutes. If we multiply by 10 minutes, if she goes 10 minutes, she'll read 20 pages, which is what we started with. So we're given this, we have to divide to find the unit rate. That's the point. The reason you divide is because you're trying to figure out how much is happening in only one minute. And by dividing the unit that we have left over is pages per minute, which is a unit rate, all right? 
So we have to do a lot of talking for the first problem, always. Now the following problems will go much, much faster. Dan can press a shirt, uh, can press a dozen shirts in two hours. How many shirts can he press in an hour? So it's how many shirts per hour, which is a unit rate, shirts per one hour. We're always gonna divide to find unit rates. But instead of just dividing the numbers, write it down as kind of like a unit conversion and see what's happening. It says a dozen shirts, that's 12 shirts so we put the unit of shirts there, 12 shirts per, or divided by, two hours. So if we divide this way, the numbers will divide, the units will be shirts per hour, which is what we're actually asking. It says how many shirts per hour. So 12 divided by two is what? Six. So it's six shirts per hour. Because the only unit left is shirt per hour and nothing cancels, it's not like a unit conversion problem where we cancel something. We just have to have the unit that left over from the division of what we started with. So shirts per hour is what we have. This means for every one hour, he can press six shirts. It makes sense, right? Because after the first hour, he presses six shirts. But after the next hour, the second hour, he presses another six shirts. And six plus six is 12. And we already know he can do 12 shirts in two hours. So again, all we're doing is dividing, but I want you to write the units down so you know the unit rate that you're getting at the end. All right, next problem. It says, Zoe purchased three new throw pillows for $45. How much does each pillow cost? So think about it. When you ask how much does each pillow cost, what unit are you really seeking? How much does each pillow cost? That is dollars per pillow. We don't usually go around saying this pillow is you know, $35 per pillow. We usually don't talk like that, but when we know that something has a cost for every pillow, that's what it is. It's a unit rate. It's $45 uh, for five pillows. What is the cost per one pillow? The cost per pillow, that's a unit rate. So the problem says $45. So write 45, you can put a dollar sign if you want, but I'm gonna write dollars out. $45 per means division per what? Five pillows. So write five pillows. Now don't worry that this doesn't look like a normal unit like kilometers or whatever. We had shirts here. You can use anything for your unit. This is pages, this is shirts, you know, and here we have pillows. That's okay. $45 per, per means a division bar, five pillows. That's what we're saying in the problem. Uh, it says five new pillows for $45. That means we buy $45 per every five pillows. So it's $45 per every five pillows. Now, if we carry out this division, 45 divided by five is of course nine, and the units don't change or cancel, it's just dollars per pillow. They have to come around. They don't, if they don't cancel, they have to be in your answer. So the unit rate here is $9 per pillow because there's like an invisible one here, $9 for every one pillow. Right? So the first pillow costs nine dollars. The next pillow costs nine more dollars. The third pillow costs nine more dollars. So if you do that five times and buy five pillows, then nine times five is forty-five dollars for five pillows. All right, that's how unit rates work out. All right, only two more problems. It says Calvin's drone can fly 72 meters in six seconds. How many meters can it fly in one second? How many meters can it fly in one second? So that's a dead giveaway. We're trying to find out what's happening in one second. That's a unit uh, rate. How many meters per second? That's what we're asking. Another way of saying this, how many meters can it fly in one second? We just say, how many meters per second does the thing fly? That's a unit rate. Now in the problem statement, it told us that the drone can fly 72, and we'll put M for meters, right? And it can do that every six seconds, so we'll put six seconds. So 72 meters per every six seconds. That's what's happening here. If it can fly 72 meters in six seconds, that's the same thing as 72 meters per every six seconds. Now we do the division. What is 72 divided by six? 72 divided by six is 12 because 12 times six is 72. And the unit, nothing cancels, so the unit has to come along. You can write it as meter per second or meter slash second. The slash is the same as this uh, division sign here. So that means the unit rate is this drone is flying 12 meters per second. Another way of thinking about that is 12 meters for every one second, and that's what makes it a unit rate. So after the first second, it goes 12 meters. 
After the next second, it goes 12 more meters. After the third second, it goes 12 more meters. And if you do that over six seconds, 12 times six is 72 meters altogether. All right, here's our very last problem. It says Rachel's, actually we might have one more. No, this is our very last problem. Rachel's chickens uh, lay 28 eggs per week. 28 eggs per week. How many eggs do they lay each day? How many, how many eggs do they lay each day? That's a unit rate, eggs per day means eggs per every one day. It's a unit rate, whatever is happening per one day. So let's start with what we are given in the problem statement. We are told that it, they lay 28 eggs, so I'm gonna literally write eggs here, per every what? It says each week. So that's every one week, right? Now, if we just do the division here, 28 divided by one is 28, we're gonna get eggs per week. 28 eggs per week, that's what we know because it says in the problem that this is happening 28 eggs every week. But the problem says how many eggs per day, right? So you have to do a unit conversion. You can leave this here, this is what's given in the problem, 28 eggs per every one week, and we now know how to do unit conversions. We need to convert weeks into days. Now you know that there's seven days in a week, right? So we're gonna write it as one week is seven days. And the reason we wrote it this way, instead of flipping it upside down, is because now we have weeks on the top and weeks on the bottom. Remember, we've been talking about in fractions. When things are on the top and the bottom, you cancel them. Well, the same thing happens with units. Weeks is on the top and weeks is on the bottom. This is exactly as we have always done any unit conversion, from inches to feet or from kilometers to centimeters or whatever. We always arrange the units. Now, if we carry out what is here, we're only gonna have eggs per day. And that's what we're trying to find. That's what the problem asked us for. So we have to take 28 divided by one. That's not gonna do anything. Times one, that's not gonna do anything. But then we still have to divide by seven. So what is 28 divided by seven? 28 divided by seven is four, and the unit is eggs per day. Eggs, whoops, eggs per day which means four eggs for every one day. So that's the answer, that's the unit rate, four eggs per day. Now, I did it this way because I want to show you how you, you can just take the information out of a problem and get to the answer only knowing the units. But you might have not done it quite this way. You might have th be thinking, well, it's 28 eggs per week, but I know a week is seven days, so I'm just gonna make it 28 divided by seven days. That's fine, that's all we did here. Notice all we did was take 28 divided by seven anyway. I arranged it this way, pulling information out of the problem, 28 eggs per one week, and then converting one week to seven days, and then carrying out the division here, the ones don't do anything, dividing here gives us eggs per day. This method of solving problems using units, you will actually use it forever. If you go into a branch of science and engineering, I promise you, you will be 15 years from now doing a problem and remembering back to these lessons where I'm teaching you this because it is the most powerful technique that I personally know when solving problems. So here we've conquered the idea of a unit rate. You are familiar with tons of unit rates. How much does something cost per pound? How much does something cost per gallon or per liter? How much does some, how far does something go per second? How many pages does somebody read per minute? Anytime we divide two things like that, we're going to get a unit rate. Because when we take, for instance, dollars per $45 per five pillows and we carry out the division, the unit is still there as dollars per every pillow dollars per one pillow, shirts per one hour, pages per one minute, those are unit rates. It's what is happening in a single unit of time or whatever it is you're talking about. I'd like you to solve all of these. Follow me on to part two, we'll get a little more practice with unit rates in math.